Hi again, I want to talk to you today about Good Wednesday. There's a false religious teaching that is given by many people in the church and has been for many generations that Jesus died on a Friday. That's impossible. It's absolutely impossible that Jesus died on a Friday according to the Bible account itself. If we're going to believe the Bible, we have to know that Jesus died on a Wednesday, a Wednesday evening before the, the special Sabbath started the following day. And it was not a Saturday Sabbath. It was a special Sabbath according to the Word of God, according to the Scripture. So let's just take a look at what the Bible says about Good Wednesday. So in Exodus chapter 12, starting at verse 1, The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in Egypt, This month is to be for you the first month, the first month of your year. Tell the whole community of Israel that on the tenth day of this month, each man is to take a lamb for his family, one for each household. If any household is too small for a whole lamb, then they must share one with their nearest neighbor, having taken into account the number of people there are. You are to determine the amount of lamb needed in accordance with what each person will eat. The animals you choose must be year old lambs without defect, and you may take them from the sheep or the goats. Take care of them until the 14th day of the month, when all the people of the community of Israel must slaughter them at twilight. So here we see the day of preparation, what is called the day of preparation, the day Jesus died. It was the 14th day of the month, and on that day of preparation is when they would slaughter the Passover lamb. Then verse 7, Then they are to take some of the blood and put it on the sides and tops of the door frames of the houses where they eat the lambs. And that same night they are to eat the meat roasted over the fire along with bitter herbs and bread made without yeast. And if we go down to verse 14 here, it says, This is the day you are to commemorate. For the generations to come you shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord, a lasting ordinance. We see that this is the Passover before the seven days of unleavened bread. Verse 15, for seven days you are to eat bread made without yeast. That's the feast that occurs right after the Passover preparation day. The preparation day happens on the 14th, and then starting the evening, the evening of what the Jews would call the 15th day, remember their days started in the evening and went to the next evening. That next day started the special Sabbath of the Feast of Unleavened Bread. For seven days you are to eat bread without yeast. On the first day, remove the yeast from your houses. For whoever eats anything with yeast in it from the first day through the seventh must be cut off from Israel. So we see that there's a seven-day feast here. And it's the Feast of Unleavened Bread. And verse 16, On the first day, hold a sacred assembly. And another one on the seventh day. Do no work at all on these days except to prepare food for everyone to eat. That is all you may do. So you notice that this was a Sabbath. This was a sacred assembly. This was a Sabbath. This was a special Sabbath. And it happened on the first day and another one on the seventh day. There was a special Sabbath. And this is and that's why Jesus had to be cut down from the cross. Because the following day was this special Sabbath. It wasn't a Saturday Sabbath. It was a special Sabbath. Because that's what happens after the day of preparation. And we know Jesus died on the day of preparation. So then verse 17, celebrate the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Because it, it is on this very day that I brought your divisions out of Egypt. Celebrate this day as a lasting ordinance for the generations to come. And then verse 18 kind of summarizes it and says, In the first month you are to eat bread made without yeast from the evening of the 14th day until the evening of the 21st day. This is also outlined in Leviticus. If we look at Leviticus chapter 23, it says in verse 5, The Lord's Passover begins at twilight on the 14th day of the first month. That's when the Lord's Passover begins. We know that Jesus ate the Passover on that twilight of that 14th day. And then later that same day, the day of preparation, he died on the cross before the special Sabbath began on the 15th day. On the 15th day of that month, the Lord's Feast of Unleavened Bread begins. For seven days you must eat bread made without yeast. On the first day, hold a sacred assembly and do no regular work. Once again, just like it told us in Exodus, 
They were not to do any regular work. This was a special Sabbath. Now, if we look at the account in Luke chapter 22, and we'll start at verse 7 here, it says, Then came the day of unleavened bread, which the Passover lamb had to be sacrificed. So we know this is talking about the day of preparation. The Passover lamb had to be sacrificed. That's what is known as the day of preparation that I'll be referred to later. And Jesus sent Peter and John saying, go and make preparations for us to eat the Passover. So we see that uh, what we call the Lord's Supper is the Passover. It was the Passover. That is the Lord's Supper. And then we see down in verse 14, when the hour came, Jesus and the apostles reclined at the table. And he said to them, I've eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. This Passover. He was eating the Passover with his disciples. For I tell you, I will not eat it again until it finds fulfillment in the kingdom of God. And of course, he's talking about the Passover. I will not eat it, the Passover, again, until it finds its fulfillment in the kingdom of God. And of course, it did when Jesus died on the cross. And then if we go down to verse 39, Jesus went out as usual to the Mount of Olives and his disciples followed him. This is after they ate the Passover. And then we have the whole Gethsemane scene. In verse 47, when he was still speaking, a crowd came up and the man who was called Judas, one of the twelve, was leading them. And he approached Jesus to kiss him. And Jesus said, Judas, do you betray the Son of Man with a kiss? And then we see in verse 54, then they, then seizing him, they led him away and took him into the house of the high priest. And Peter followed at a distance. So here we see that this is when they took Jesus and he was taken on the night, the very night after he ate the Passover. That's when he was taken. So we see that on the very evening when Jesus ate the Passover, that very evening he was taken into custody. And then if we move on to verse 66, it says, At daybreak, the council of the elders of the people, both chief priests and teachers of the law, met together and Jesus was led before them. So you see it's daybreak, the day after they took him, they they uh, took him into custody on the evening after he ate the Passover. And then the following morning at daybreak is when the council of elders of the people, both chief priests and teachers of the law, met together and Jesus was led before them. Now if we go to the next chapter, Luke 23, and we look at verse 44. It was now about the sixth hour, and darkness came over the whole land until the ninth hour. So I remember the Jewish calendar, the sixth hour would be approximately noon. Daylight hours started at about 6 a.m., and the sixth hour would be about noon. So from basically about noon until about 3 o'clock in the afternoon, until the ninth hour, darkness came over the whole land. For the sun stopped shining, and the curtain in the temple was torn in two. And Jesus called out with a loud voice, Father, into your commands I commit my spirit. And when he said this, he breathed his last. Now this was the ninth hour. This was about 3 p.m. when this happened, when Jesus died on the cross. Now if we go down to verse 50, it says, Now there was a man named Joseph, a member of the council, a good and upright man who had not consented to their decision and action. And he came from a Judean town of Arimathea, and he was waiting for the kingdom of God. And going to Pilate, he asked for Jesus' body. Then he took it down, wrapped it in linen cloth, and placed it in a tomb cut in a rock, one in which no one had yet been laid. It was preparation day, and the Sabbath was about to begin. This tells you exactly how much time has passed. There's some people who say that it was a matter of days when Jesus was standing trial before all the different leaders and everything. No, not true. Because it says it was preparation day. What, What did Jesus just get through doing? He just got through eating the Passover which is the evening of that preparation day. And it was still preparation day. In other words, it wasn't 6 o'clock the following day yet. They ate the Passover on the evening of preparation day, which was, in this case, a Tuesday night. We would call it a Tuesday night. And this was Wednesday. And until Wednesday at 6 p.m., it was still preparation day. And the Sabbath was about to begin. So the, this, what Sabbath is this talking about? The special Sabbath we read about in Exodus and Leviticus. There's a special Sabbath. This is not a Saturday Sabbath. It's a special Sabbath. John chapter 19 makes this perfectly clear for us. In John 19, verse 31, Now it was the day of preparation, and the next day was to be a what? 
a special Sabbath. This was not a Saturday Sabbath. It was a special Sabbath. So Jesus ate the Passover on the 14th of the month as prescribed by the law of Moses. And he actually died before the end of that day as the actual Passover lamb. He became the Passover lamb and he died on the day of preparation before the special Sabbath, which was started on the 15th day at at evening of the 15th day, about 6 p.m. on the 15th day. That's the day after the day of preparation. It was the day of preparation when Jesus died. It is finished. He sat and he bowed and he gave up his spirit. It was the preparation day. It was the day of preparation. And the next day was to be the special Sabbath. Not a regular Saturday Sabbath, a special Sabbath. And because the Jews did not want the bodies to be left on the cross during the Sabbath, they asked Pilate to have the legs broken and their bodies taken down. And then verse 33, but when they came to Jesus, they found he was already dead. So they did not break his legs. So he was he was definitely dead before the Sabbath. And we know it was about 3 p.m. because we saw that it was from the sixth hour to the ninth hour. There was darkness. And that's when it says that's when he gave up his spirit. So if we go back to Luke 23, verse 54, it was preparation day and the Sabbath was about to begin. We know that John told us this was a special Sabbath. And we know from Exodus and Leviticus that this was a special Sabbath. There's no doubt about this. It was prescribed by the law. They had to have a special Sabbath after the preparation day. So it was preparation day. The following day was a special Sabbath that was about to begin. And the women who had come with Jesus from Galilee followed Joseph and saw the tomb and how his body was laid in it. And then they went home and prepared spices and perfumes, but they rested on the Sabbath in obedience to the commandment. Now I want you to notice something here. It says that the women, they followed Joseph and saw where the tomb was and where his body was laid. And this was before that special Sabbath began. And They did not have time to prepare spices and perfumes before that special Sabbath began. So they went home and prepared spices and perfumes, but they rested on the Sabbath in obedience to the commandment. In other words, they did not immediately prepare these spices and perfumes, and those took hours and hours to do. It didn't just happen. You didn't just prepare spices and perfumes. It took hours to do. And if we go back to John chapter 19, and we look at verse 38, It tells us the same account. It says, Later, Joseph of Arimathea asked Pilate for the body of Jesus. Now, Joseph was a disciple of Jesus, but secretly because he feared the Jews. With Pilate's permission, he came and took the body away. He was accompanied by Nicodemus, the man who earlier had visited with Jesus that night. And Nicodemus brought a mixture of myrrh and aloes, about 75 pounds. Now, for a king, you'd have about 40 pounds. This tells you how much regard... Uh, Joseph of Arimathea and Nicodemus had for Jesus. They had about 75 pounds of myrrh and aloes they were going to use unwrapping his body. And then verse 40, it says, Taking Jesus' body, the two of them wrapped it with the spices in strips of linen. This was in accordance with Jewish burial customs. After Jesus died, it had to be within an hour or so of when Jesus died because they only had a couple hours. They only had a few hours until the special Sabbath began and they couldn't work on the special Sabbath. So here we see that they, within a couple hours, it took them a couple hours to wrap Jesus' body with spices in strips of linen because they did it in accordance with Jewish burial customs. If you saw the story of Lazarus, we saw when when Lazarus was risen from the dead by Jesus, uh, he came out wrapped up like a mummy. And that's what they did to Jesus. They wrapped him like a mummy. So we can see here that Nicodemus and Joseph of Arimathea, they had just enough time to wrap Jesus' body and get it in the tomb before the special Sabbath began. And we see in verse 41, at the place where Jesus was crucified, there was a garden and in the garden, a new tomb in which no one had been ever been laid. And notice that it's at the place where Jesus was crucified. They basically took his body straight from where he was crucified and they started wrapping it right away. And because it was the Jewish day of preparation and since the tomb was nearby, they laid Jesus there. So this was something that was done very quickly after Jesus died, and it had to be done before the special Sabbath began. So if we go back to Luke chapter 23, and we look at verse 52, it says, Going to Pilate, he asked for Jesus' body. And this is talking about Joseph of Arimathea. Going to Pilate, he asked for Jesus' body. Then he took it down. 
wrapped it in linen cloth and placed it in a tomb cut in a rock, one in which no one had yet been laid. So that's why it was nearby. He took it down from the cross and they took it to a nearby tomb. It was preparation day and the special Sabbath was about to begin. The women who had come with Jesus from Galilee followed Joseph and saw the tomb and how his body was laid in it. And that's how they knew where to find the tomb. And they went home and prepared spices and perfumes, but they rested on the Sabbath in obedience to the commandment. Now, remember that they were not allowed to do any work on the special Sabbath, which is the day after the day of preparation, the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread. They were not allowed to do any work for that 24-hour period. So basically what we have here is Jesus died on a Wednesday night before 6 o'clock, before that day ended. Before the evening of that Sabbath, he died. And he was taken down about 3 p.m. is when he died. And he was taken down by Joseph Arimathea. And Joseph and Nicodemus wrapped his body in spices. That would take a couple hours. So they did that. And they probably just got it done in time before the special Sabbath started the following day, which would be Thursday. And it would start on Wednesday night. Of course, the day started in the evening for the Jews. So they had until about 6 p.m., and after that, they couldn't do any work. So they got him in the tomb before that Sabbath began. And it's important to know that because they couldn't do any work on the Sabbath. That means Jesus was in that tomb for 24 hours before the women could even start preparing the spices, which would take another, probably a day, a full day. It would take many hours and probably a full day to prepare the spices. And then we see that after that, they rested on the Sabbath, and that would be the Saturday Sabbath, because what would happen after that? After they prepared this, the spices from Thursday night till Friday night was that day, the day in between the special Sabbath and the Saturday Sabbath. Then from Friday night to Saturday night, that's what we would call uh, Friday night to Saturday night. That's the Saturday Sabbath of the Jews. And they couldn't do any work that day either. So they had to rest on that day. After they prepared the spices on that previous day, they had to rest on the regular Sabbath. And that's why they went to bring the spices to Jesus' tomb on Sunday. In John chapter 20 and verse 1, early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark. So this is Sunday morning. This Remember, the Sabbath ended uh, in the evening of Saturday night, Saturday around 6 p.m. is when the Sabbath ended. So early on that Sunday morning, while it was first dark, well, it was still dark. It was still dark out. So there was no day yet. Okay, it's important to realize there was no day daylight yet. It was still dark. It was still the, the nighttime of the first day of the week of that Sunday. While it was still dark, Mary went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. In Luke chapter 24, verse 1, on the first day of the week, that's, that's Sunday, that would be right after the Sabbath ended on Saturday night. On the first day of the week, very early in the morning, that would be Sunday morning, very early in the morning, while it was still dark, we saw it. It was still dark, and John had told us. The women took the spices they had prepared and went to the tomb. The spices they had prepared. Now, that took many hours. That had to have been done between Thursday night and Friday night, between the special Sabbath and the Saturday Sabbath. That's the only time they could have done this. So this once again proves that Jesus had to have died on a Wednesday night. There's no doubt about it. And this Sunday morning, when they went very early in the morning, it was not even light yet when they took the spices and they found that the stone had been rolled away from the tomb. Now, this all makes sense when we look at Matthew chapter 12, where Jesus tells us in verse 39, He answered and said to them, An evil and adulterous generation seeks after a sign, but there shall no sign be given to it but the sign of the prophet Jonah. For as Jonah was three days and three nights in the whale's belly, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. So hold on a second. He's going to be in the ground for three days and three nights. Now, let's do a little examination here. If Jesus had died on a Friday and he was in the ground for three days and three nights, well, if he died on a Friday before, before the evening, okay, we could, you know, very loosely say, okay, 
Friday would be one day. We could very loosely say, even though that's only, even though it wouldn't be a full day, it would be three hours, three hours of a day, not a, not a whole day. So, I mean, if you want to be very loose in your interpretation, you say, okay, well, he was, uh, he was dead for three hours on Friday and then Saturday. That's it. That's a day and three hours. One day and three hours is all the days you'd have if Jesus died on a Friday. If he died on a Friday night, if he died on a good Friday, like religion tells us, then there's no possibility that Jesus' words were true. He would have had to have lied to us because he said he'd be in the earth, the heart of the earth three days and three nights. Now, if you look at how it actually happened, we see that Jesus was telling the truth because we know that Jesus died before a special Sabbath. He died on a Wednesday night. He had all day Thursday, all day Friday, and all day Saturday in the heart of the earth. That's three days. Coincidence? Hmm. Okay, he died on a Wednesday evening. So it was before it even got dark on that Wednesday. So he had Wednesday night, Thursday night, and Friday night. Three full nights in the heart of the earth. Now, Saturday was still dark when the stone was already rolled away. So he didn't even have to be in the heart of the earth at all on Saturday night. And he would still would have had three days and three nights. And we don't know exactly when Jesus rose from the dead. We know that he was already risen early in the morning on Sunday morning. He was already risen. So we know that the three days and three nights in the heart of the earth proves that Jesus died on a Wednesday night. And the account itself proves that Jesus died on a Wednesday night. There's no way the women could have prepared the spices. There's no way that any of it could have happened as written, as recorded in the Bible, if Jesus had not died on a Wednesday. So as you can see, Jesus died on a Wednesday night. He did not die on a Friday night. That is utter garbage. It's baloney. It's religious baloney. And... Um, there's so many things that are religiously taught that are not true in the Bible, and that's one of them. So if you're going to celebrate Good Friday this year, move it back a couple days to Wednesday. Celebrate Good Wednesday instead. Um, and honestly, uh, Jesus isn't dead anymore. He rose from the dead. So he doesn't want you celebrating Good Friday to begin with. He wants you to be celebrating Easter because he's risen from the dead. Jesus right now, he is glorified and he's in his glory. He's not dead. He's not hanging on a cross. That's not Jesus. Jesus already did that. He's risen from the dead. He wants us to celebrate Easter. Easter is, is a celebration we should do every day. Every day is Easter for us because Jesus has already risen from the dead and our new life in Christ depends on that. And Easter is the greatest holiday of the Christian calendar because it is basically acknowledging that Jesus rose from the dead. And I don't believe that you have to celebrate that one day a year. I think that should be celebrated every day of the year in our hearts. Um, of course, if you want to celebrate holidays, there's nothing wrong with that. You know, some people acknowledge holidays, others don't. We see in Romans 14, one man considers one day more sacred than another. Another man considers every day alike. Each one should be fully convinced in his own mind. If you want to have a special holiday for Easter, go ahead, go for it. You know what? That's, that's fine. One man considers one day more sacred than another. Another man considers every day alike. Each one person should be fully convinced in his own mind. He who regards one day as special, he does so to the Lord. So this Easter, let's remember that Jesus died on a Wednesday night. He rose from the dead sometime uh, between Saturday night and um, Sunday, early, early Sunday morning, sometime in that time period. We know it was after three days and three nights had passed. So it, was, it could have been any time on that Saturday night, Jesus rose from the dead. We know that the angel, when he appeared, he rolled away the stone. Jesus didn't rise from the dead right then. He'd already been risen. He was already risen from the dead. So uh, that's the real story of Easter, the real story of Jesus' death and resurrection as the Bible records it. So thanks for watching.